My name is Benedetto Latteri. I'm the Italian ambassador. Which is your attitude towards the uh, European Union? There is a sympathy, there is an affinity, there is an admiration for the European Union. Your philosophies, justice, equality before the law, human rights, we admire that and we emulate, we try to emulate, right? We love the European Union, we love Europe. The problem is Europe doesn't love us. Europe doesn't even know Indonesia. They only know Bali. I grew up in Europe. Maybe I know European history maybe better than many Europeans. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> what I'm afraid of is that Europe will lose your moral leadership. The West has double standards. This, I'm saying this as a friend, that please be careful. You will be still strong, you will be still wealthy, but as Hassan Wira you said, there's a shift. Now, we don't really need Europe anymore. There's double standard. People see what's happening. The West has one standard for this, another standard for that. I will not go into details, you know, because 1,000 friends too few, one enemy too many. Thank you, Pak Prabowo. Capres nomor urut tua Prabowo Subianto bicara soal sikapnya terhadap Cina dan Amerika Serikat AS. Dia mengaku menghormati kedua negara itu. Hal itu disampaikan Prabowo dalam acara bertajuk Trimega Political and Economic Outlook 2024 di Grand Ballroom The Rich Carlton Pacific Place Jakarta Selatan, Rabu 31 Januari 2024. Dalam acara itu, Prabowo menjadi pembicara di sesi kedua memaparkan Economic Outlook 2024. Saya ya, hormat, bersahabat, kagum sama Tiongkok. Saya tidak ragu-ragu, saya katakan itu. Tapi, saya hormat juga sama Amerika. I like United States, right? We all like United States, Prabowo kemudian menyolek Menteri BUMN Erick Thohir yang hadir di lokasi. Dia bertanya kemana Erick saat liburan. Kalian kalau libur maunya kemana? Uh, ya kan? Pandu kalau libur ke, ke Amerika dia. Apalagi Wisnu, gue udah tahu nih orang-orang ini semua. Ya kan? Uh, Erick kemana Erick kalau, kalau libur? Ya yeah. kan? Prabowo menegaskan menghormati semua negara. Menurutnya, hal ini pula yang dilakukan oleh para pendiri bangsa. Jadi, we respect, we respect Europe, we respect everybody. Itu kelebihan Indonesia. Tradisi kita non block. Itu kita terima kasih sama Bung Karno, Bung Hatta, Syahrir, pendiri-pendiri kita terima kasih. They were very wise. Yeah, kan? So, that is one lesson I learned. Saya itu nyesel, saya itu. Saya belajar terlambat satu filosofi yang saya dapat dari tahu. Tahu itu, saya dapatnya sesudah saya lengser. Nyesel juga gue, ya kan? Kenapa enggak dari dulu, ya? Ajarannya itu sederhana. One thousand friends to you. One... Waktu dari muda saya dididik secara barat Di barat, no, you have to win Waduh, ya kan? I would also like to refer to the proposals from uh, Minister Popovo to solve the uh, conflict in Ukraine. I would like to ask you, Minister, why didn't you address the Russian aggression uh, that this was the only reason for this conflict and that if uh, 
Ukraine stops to defend itself, uh, the sovereignty of Ukraine uh, would be gone. And if Russia stops the war, uh, the conflict would uh, come to an end. And if we follow your proposals uh, to come to a ceasefire, wouldn't this only cement uh, a new frozen conflict in Europe? Thank you. Yes, uh, John, thank you. I don't, I don't know if I can answer these questions in three minutes, but I will try. Uh, several questions uh, insinuated that I'm equating between the invader and the invaded. I think this is, a, is an emotional uh, reaction. But what I'm putting forward is conflict resolution. I'm not saying which side is right or wrong. And I think this is being taken mistakenly because Indonesia's position is very clear. In the United Nations, we voted against the Russian invasion. We voted. You can check our voting record. We are not talking about right or wrong. I'm just proposing that we attempt at conflict resolution and this has been done historically. Please, our European friends, please do not think in terms of five or ten years. Think in terms of 50 years. We in Asia, we have our share of conflict of war. Maybe more, more disastrous, more bloody than what's being experienced in Ukraine. Ask our Vietnamese friends, our Vietnamese brothers, ask our Cambodian brothers. Ask them how many times they've been invaded. Ask our Vietnamese friends how many times we have been invaded. Ask Indonesians how many times we have been invaded. We know war. We want to resolve. We want to help. But again, it's up to the two parties. The United Na what is the United Nations for? If not for conflict resolution. Why is a proposal for a demilitarized zone so taken as if it's not rational? We had, we have a demilitarized zone in Korea. We had a demilitarized zone between North and South Vietnam. We had a demilitarized zone in the Sinai. We have now United States monitoring force in many countries. There are conflicts not only in Europe. There are violations of sovereignty not only in Europe. Ask our brothers in the Middle East. Ask the Africans. Ask the people of the Democratic Republic of Congo. How many countries invaded them? There are United Nations forces in the Congo. So what I'm proposing is how we try to resolve this conflict by respecting the United Nations. That's all. I'm not equating aggression with the aggressors. Please understand, we in this part of the world, we have been victims of aggression many, many times. I think that's my uh, answer. And for Myanmar, very clear that uh, uh, ASEAN has uh, not accepted the authoritarian and uh, the, uh, the activities and the lethal actions of the Myanmarese military regime against their own people. So that is very clear.